Okay, let's see more examples of reductions. So here is one of the canonical problems uh, on graphs. I give you a graph, and you would like to find a maximum, usually a maximum uh, size set of vertices of the graph such that no pair of them uh, intersect. Well, no pair of them are adjacent, sorry. So, such a set of vertices is called independent. So, here is, for example, a set of three vertices. But then, of course, it's natural to ask, can you do better, right? Maybe by moving things around, one can get four vertices, right? Notice that this is not unique, right? So, I can pick this vertex and this vertex and this vertex, right? And in this particular graph, one can argue that you cannot do better than three. And, um, right, because, and here is the argument, by the way, just for fun. This is a triangle. It's, well, triangle is a clique of three vertices. So for the independent, you can pick only one vertex from here. You have two vertices here that are connected by an edge. You can pick one from them. And then you can pick only this vertex you know, if you have no conflict. So in the best case, you can pick three vertices. So three indeed is the maximum size independent set for this graph. Okay. Uh, but in general, this problem is very difficult, right? Uh, and by difficult, I mean that uh, it's currently believed that this problem cannot be solved in polynomial time. Given a graph with 10 vertices, Finding the maximum size uh, independent set is an NP hard problem, and uh, we currently don't know how to solve it better than essentially uh, 2 to the uh, theta of n, right? There is a lot of work about trying to improve the constant, but you know, you cannot do much better. Um, so, so this problem is hard, but you know, it's a, such a natural problem that people care about it, right? So, for example, think about uh, uh, the graph representing tasks, right? And uh, every you connect two tasks with an edge if they conflict with each other, right? For example, they have to use the same uh, facility at the same time or something like that. And an independent set or maximum size independent set is the maximum number of activities that you can schedule in the same time, right? Graph coloring... You can think about it as generating uh, a schedule, right? Because it's every color class is independent, so you're really finding the minimum number of slots you need so that you can take uh, care of all the tasks that the graph represents. Okay. Um, you can, of course, now extend this problem to speak about maximum, si uh, maximum weight independence where every vertex has a weight, and you would like to find the independent set that has maximum uh, weight. Um, in, okay. Oops, sorry. Now here is another problem, which uh, is uh, somewhat easier, even if it doesn't look easier. I give you jobs. A job starts in certain time and ends in certain time. So you can think about every job as a as an interval. So I give you intervals on the real line. And uh, I cannot, can, uh, you know, uh, I I want to pick an independent set of intervals, right? If you think about it as a job, I want to pick a subset of the jobs such that no pair of them overlap. If you want to think about those jobs as, uh, for example, uh, processes, where every, process, every interval is just a process when it has to start, and the interval is the duration of this uh, uh, task, then you cannot uh, schedule two uh, intervals at the same time because you have a CPU with a single thread that must choose one of them, right? So, so now the question is, for example, I give you a set of intervals, they have weight, pick a maximum weight set of intervals that are independent, right? No pair of the interval intersect. In this case, for example, uh, a natural solution, this is one natural solution, the red intervals, it has values 20, right? Let's see if we have another solution here. Well, I don't have a written solution, but let's see if we can do better. It seems doubtful, right? Yes. So this is the best uh, solution. In fact, 
The value of solution is uh, is 21 because there is a one here also. Okay, so a natural question is how to solve the interval problem. And notice that this problem can be reduced, right? You can reduce to the, the interval problem uh, problem into a, a graph problem, right? So for every uh, vertex of the, uh, for every interval that is given to us, we are going to create a graph, E, F, G, H, I, right? And then you connect them, right? A is, for example, going to be connected with B because you have to choose one of them, right? You cannot choose both of them. And B is going to be connected to C, and C is going to be connected to A because they all overlap. D, on the other hand, oops, this is C. D, on the other hand, uh, overlap, uh, overlap with E, and it overlap with uh, A. Okay, so it's connected to A, but it's not connected to any other interval. Okay, E is going to con be connected to A. A is a very popular interval for some reason. Um, and E is connected to F because it overlap with the interval F. And uh, that's it, right? Okay. Um, G is going to be overlap with A. Uh, uh, well, F overlap with H, right? Uh, and um, and H overlap with a G, right? Uh, and so on and so forth. Right? Let me not do all the, the examples. Right? I get a graph where two intervals are connected by an edge. Two vertices are connected by edge, right? Only if, even only if the two interval that corresponds to are, uh, are overlapping. And now, an in the, a maximum weight independent set in this graph is exactly a solution for the interval graph, right? Now, this is a good example of a reduction that you don't want to do because, in fact, the maximum weight independent set for uh, intervals is something you can compute the, uh, in polynomial time using essentially dynamic programming. So that's not very interesting, uh, while, the, as I said, uh, mentioned before, the graph maximum weight independence is a harder problem. But still, it's a, a natural reduction, and you might do it, in fact, if you have a solver, because, you know, your instance might be so small that uh, you might not care about the efficiency too much. Okay, here's maybe a more interesting variant of this problem. I give you a circular graph. So what is a circular graph? I give you a circle. And uh, I give you uh, intervals on the circle, right? Arcs on the circle. And now you want to find, again, an independent set of uh, arcs that don't intersect, their interior don't intersect. So this, for example, uh, imagine that you have tasks that have to be done every day. You know the time that they have to be done. Again, you have conflicts. And you would like to schedule, you know, you would like to pick a large... Uh, set of uh, uh, tasks or arcs that can be scheduled in the same time. They don't have a conflict. And the fun problem is that we can solve this problem by reducing it to the uh, problem on the line, right? The, the interval version. And the idea is that think about the optimal solution, right? We have an optimal solution. We don't know what it is, right? We most definitely do not know what it is. I don't know, maybe that's the optimal solution. But what we can do, we can guess one of the intervals, right? We can try every interval and say, is this interval part of the optimal solution? Now, the idea is that if this is interval is part of the optimal solution, then we add it to our candidate solution, and then we cut the line. We cut the circle, and if you cut the circle, now you get the line. Notice that all the intervals that overlap this interval that we decided part of the optimal solution, we can throw them away. They cannot be part of the solution. So what remains, the interval that remains that can still be in the, in the independent set, are no longer uh, uh, forming a circle. They form a line, right? Because I cut the circle here. So you can take the circle in the cut line and straighten it. And all the arcs that remain relevant now are becoming intervals. 
And now it's a, it's a problem about, in, uh, you know, every R became interval, it's a problem about finding the maximum interval. Now, we have to try it for every interval, so we have to do it n times. So this is no longer a, a one-shot reduction, this is an n time reduction. Here is the pseudocode of this reduction. Right, so for every uh, arc, we remove uh, uh, C uh, uh, from the collection of arcs and all the arcs that overlap it, and we find the optimal solution for the remaining uh, uh, instance, which again now is uh, essentially really a, a problem along the line because we cut the circle in this interval which we know how to do now because uh, of the reduction or because we have an algorithm for it. And that gives us a candidate solution. We compute the value of this uh, solution. And if it's better, this is the new value. And if this is better than what we have before, we update to this current solution. So we try all interval and we turn the best solution. So the fact that this is a circular uh, R graph says that the problem does not become much harder and we didn't have to think about how to solve it directly. We just reduced it to a problem that we know how to solve, which is uh, always nice and enjoyable. Okay, and I already did the example, so that's it. Thank you.